right? Riding incredibly well, riding exactly where we knew he would be riding. He's one of the strongest riders in the sport. Imagine what he is thinking. And look how close it is, everyone. Look how close it is. Hey everyone and welcome to a new YouTube video. Finally, race reports are back and this one about the championship challenge submarine. First of all, I want to apologize that there was no uh, race report about the PTO European Open and Ibiza. Yeah, maybe most of you know the race didn't go um, so well for me and to be honest, after the race I just yeah, I was pretty tired to talk about it. I did two really long podcasts on it. One in German, which is the Pushing Limits What The Funk podcast. And one with the Road to European Open, how they train um, with the boys Aaron, Tom uh, and Jack. So yeah, if you guys want to listen to that if, and if you want to know all the details about my race, um, yeah. Check them out. Uh, I'll put the link into bio. But now let's move on to my race report of uh, Challenge Submarine, which definitely didn't go better. Did which definitely did go better. So it's my was my fifth time actually racing in Submarine. I did the Championship three times before, and last year also did the World Triathlon Long Distance World Championship. Um, so I was two times third, one time in the Championship, one time last year on the. Uh, world triathlon long distance world champs uh, so yeah i have pretty good memories with this race i always love to to travel there it's just really easy for us it's just a four hour car drive straight through austria the organization is perfect um, just everything is happening on the experionic sphere so if you're staying there like all the paths to the transition and uh, to everywhere to some start are just really short so it's, it's pretty easy and, and convenient and uh, yeah just always uh, good race which always fits into my schedule and of course uh, it's always a, a great um, start field um, because of yeah increased price money uh, and now also because of the yeah increased PTO points as it's a gold tier race I think the strength of field um, was like 86 which was not much worse than uh, for example the European Open which was just over 90 um, so yeah was some pretty good good points uh, and price money there there on the line so let's go go into my uh, race report otherwise the video <laughs> will, will just get too long uh, moving on to to the swim um, yeah I had a pretty bad uh, start the water was actually just 14.4 degrees Celsius and um, it's not like that I was struggling with the cold um, but I just couldn't really move my my arms fast at the start and I kind of needed like this 400 500 meter to to find my rhythm and uh, yeah then uh, I finally could like switch and catch up uh, to to the group which already at that point I had like a, a sub probably 20 30 meter gap um, luckily I could close it over the next yeah 200 300 meters but I really had to swim hard, dig deep for that. Yeah, until the end of the swim, I just stayed in that group, and actually, um, the position I was in was was still quite fine. Just like chase peg, I think. Uh, after trans after T1, um, I was 54 seconds down to to the leader Aaron Royal, 
Um, so yeah, it was it was still all okay. I was straight there with with Tom Bishop as well. Where I knew he's a, a strong cyclist, and of course uh, it was in, in in his interest as well to to move to the front. So I always love the love the bike part uh, at uh, the championship in Samarine, as it's just like really 90 kilometer completely flat course. It's always really windy. And yeah, you have to keep your arrow position 90k, which is really hard. And it's 20 meter uh, rule as well. So yeah, everything you you need for uh, for or everything I need, everything all the strong cyclists need. And um, yeah, I was just pushing straight from from the get go um, and was moving uh, really quick uh, with, with Tom Bishop. And I think we caught the lead, uh, which was uh, Mathis Mar Margier. From, from France, Aaron Royal and, and Richard Waga. I think we caught them at about uh, 20k. And uh, yeah, from that point, I just, uh, yeah, we, we, we built a pretty good, pretty good group. We were all riding a really fair and also really, really fast pace. Sadly, my, I was struggling with some, some back issues or like 10k uh, into the ride which I definitely have to get sorted. Um, we I think it's probably like also connected to, to the cold water uh, before that because the position is, is actually uh, comfortable for me and I never had any problems in, in, in training, also keeping it for, for a longer time. So that was a bit, bit new for me, but like this way um, I kind of had to stretch and, and move, on, move on my saddle like every, any, every one or two minutes. Yeah, it, it got a bit annoying and of course this power was just missing in my legs. Um, I'm really still putting out like a good power and we were moving fast, but I think I made um, another step forward uh, on the bike uh, during the winter and I was, ho I was hopeful to, to show that, but uh, yeah, sa sadly I couldn't, um, but yeah, like I said, it, it was still okay. Uh, so this way I really decided just to, to stay in a group with um, Matis, uh, Aaron and, and Tom Bishop and um, yeah, try to save as much energy as possible of course uh, with a 20 meter rule this is not possible but it's good of course. Yeah, I was just, just try, try to stay in the group. I still switched um, the lead with, with Matis um, yeah, quite, quite, quite a few times. And uh, yeah, I think uh, in the, of course I would, would have loved to like yeah get away from them, uh, may ideally uh, get into T2 um, all, by, all by myself. Um, but it was definitely a good decision to to not risk anything and um, kind kind of play it safe. Um, but yeah, there are still some some races this season where I can can show uh, even even better bike performance in my opinion. I think my bike data um, was like a 312 watts average, uh, which is similar to all my my bike performance uh, last year as well. But yeah, like I said, I think um, I got even better, and I, I can't wait to sh show that as well. It was definitely the fastest um, I ever went um, in in Samarine. I think at two times I already had a 47 km per hour average. Um, this time it was 47.3 km per hour average. So yeah, aerodynamic is definitely quite good. Uh, the power to, to speed ratio. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, yeah, I came, came off the bike then uh, with the other three guys. Had a good uh, second transition and went onto the run course uh, in first position uh, straight with with Matthias and, and Aaron um, behind me. Tom uh, lost, lost a few seconds there and was a bit, bit behind. Yeah, we were really pushing it uh, the first two, three K. Um, the run course, I mean, who, who knows, uh, Spanish submarine um, knows that the run course is really hard. It's more like a like cross country running. I think from that overall 21.3 K, according to my watch in the end, from that an almost nine kilometer, you, have, you had to run on grass. Yeah, it was like five and a half laps with a lot of, um, I think like three U-turns per lap and yeah, still a, lo a lot of like twists and turns. So really not a fast run course. Um, as fast as the bike times are usually in, in submarine, as slow are the, as slow are the run times. So um, I think it's, it's good for me as I'm a powerful guy and uh, yeah, you just need more power for the run course. But uh, yeah, I'm still really struggling um, on the run, especially running, running on the grass. So yeah, I knew I, 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 I kind of had to save my legs a bit, uh, bit for that. So yeah, after 3K, I, I had to let Aaron and, and Mathis go and had to try to, to, to pace my, my own half marathon, um, of course 
without anyone one catching me hopefully. Later it also got uh, got pretty warm. Um, my core core temperature went went up like crazy, and I was really struggling uh, with with the heat as well. Coming uh, of a yeah really cold and uh, yeah bad weather a German uh, winter uh, or like two weeks before in Germany were pretty bad weather. So I really wasn't used to uh, the 25 or 26 degrees it, it was on that day. Uh, even though like if you're used to that, it's actually not 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 that hot. But yeah, luckily later on I found a pretty good routine at the aid stations. Um, kind of could could cool myself. Um, back down a bit and uh, then again like last year after 10k um, I, I found I found my legs again and I could speed up a bit I think the average average uh, kilometer pace for the first 10 and a half k's over the first half was uh, 332 minute per kilometer and then I actually managed to negative split the, the half marathon and the second half was a 328 minute per kilometer Especially because on the last lap I really had to, to push hard as uh, Peter Hamerick um, was coming from behind, uh, I think with the, he even had the fastest run split. And uh, yeah, in and, and that uh, last 4k where I really had to speed up, um, I even managed to, to almost catch Aaron Royal again. Uh, just came off uh, four seconds short at the finish, which is a bummer, but. Yeah, the kilometer three, three to ten was was just a slow, but but everything as in that, I'm actually pretty pretty happy with my run performance um, on that course. Also happy with with third place. Um, yeah, congrats to to Mattis uh, for first place and Aaron for for second place. Uh, it was a it was a really close close race. Um, I think the, the top seven guys all came in uh, within three and a half minutes or something like that. So uh, yeah, it was, was pretty close and also the fastest uh, Summerine edition ever. I think uh, Matt just did the course record with a 331 and I had a, just like a 332 um, high. So um, yeah, also re really quick quick times for, for 70.3 distance. And uh, yeah, but ha really happy with my with my overall performance for that time of the year. Of course, um, I'm not in top shape yet in my in May, and uh, that's totally fine. I don't. I want to be in top shape uh, in Aegis, especially for the Seven World Three World Championship, uh, which is my my big season highlight. So yeah, this is a good good confidence booster now, especially after the bad race at the PQ European Open. Now I'm I'm back in Germany for my. For my next training block, we are trying to build on that performance now, of course. And uh, my next race is going to be um, change, only change Weichsee, which is in the beginning of July. So until that, we're going to have a pretty good, pretty good uh, training block. Uh, try to get even better, try to get even more out of, out of my shape and even more out of my really solid uh, base I built up over the winter. So yeah, I'm really looking forward uh, for already to the, to the next races, uh, but also to to the, to the training now and yeah just want to, to thank everyone for, for the great support and everyone for the messages. If you are interested in a, a even more detailed uh, German uh, race report you should also check out the newest episode of the Push Emails What the Funk app po uh, podcast which we recorded yesterday. Uh, yeah I think it went over 1 hour 15 minutes all about just all about the championship and summary. Uh, but of course, I don't want to keep the video. I can't keep that video that long, so um, had to leave out uh, some really small details. So if you're interested in that, go check it out. And um, yeah, thanks uh, everyone for watching. I really hope you you enjoyed the video. Um, thanks to my sister for uh, filming yeah the the scenes during the during the race and also for cutting the video. Yeah, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe and uh, see you in the next video. Cheers.